We're ready to start our stories today. Everybody have their listening ears on today? We're going to have all kinds of stories today about the earth and the environment because it's Sustainable Week and Screen Free Week. Do you know what Screen Free Week would be? No computers. Doing arts and crafts and listening to stories. But this is Sustainable, and it, we have this celebration every year to celebrate our health and the environment. We want, because we want to stay healthy, right? And we want our environment to stay clean, right? So we're going to read a lot of stories about um, digging and um, growing. OK, so here we go. We're going to start with, sit down. Okay, we're, we're, on, we're on television, so we want to keep quiet for the kids at home to hear, okay? And any stories that you have, you can tell me later, all right? The first story is called The Carrot Seed. I know that one. Do you know it? Okay. Okay, ready? The Carrot Seed. A little boy planted a carrot seed. Did you ever plant a seed? His mother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. His father said, I'm afraid it won't come up. And his big brother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. Every day, the little boy pulled up the weeds all around the seed and he sprinkled the ground with water. But nothing came up. You see anything growing yet? No. 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 And nothing came up. I think he's waiting and waiting and everyone kept saying it wouldn't come up. But he still pulled up the weeds around it every day. And every day he sprinkled the ground with water. You see anything yet? No. Me either. And then, one day, <coughs> a carrot came up. No. That's a big just as the little boy had known it would. So see what happens? If you plant a little seed and you take care of it and you water it every day and you pull the weeds, you're gonna get a carrot or a bean, whatever you planted. Okay? So that's story number one. That's about the environment, right? Planting? You wanna plant all kinds of vegetables for us to eat. So and you have to take care of trash and your environment is dirty. Yep, right. So the next one we have, guess what? It's about a carrot again called carrot soup. Who's ever had carrot soup? Say, raise your hand. I don't know if I ever. I've had tomato soup. Well, let's read about carrot. Okay, here's carrot soup. Ready? It was spring. And it was Rabbit's favorite season. It was time to plant the garden, order carrot seeds, and look forward to enjoying his favorite food, which was carrot soup. Look, there's all kinds of carrots and all the things he's going to put in his soup. Different kinds. Rabbit plowed the fields, and he planted all the seeds. He's threw all the seeds all around. And look, what, what, what's Rabbit doing again? He's watering, which is so important. And then he weeded, which is also very important, just like the little boy did with his. He waited and waited and waited until finally it was time to pick the carrots. Rabbit gathered all of his tools in his wheelbarrow and off he went. But something was terribly wrong at the carrot patch. Rabbit looked up. Rabbit looked down. He looked over and he looked under and inside and out. 
Rabbit saw <coughs> roots and rocks and dirt and mud. But what Rabbit did not see were carrots. There were no carrots. None. They were gone. I don't know what happened. Rabbit went to see Mole. Mole, have you seen my carrots? Someone has stolen all my carrots. And Mole replied, Rabbit, you know I don't see very well. Why don't you go and ask Dog? Dog, dog, someone has taken all of my carrots, said Rabbit. Have you seen them? I don't care much for carrots, said Dog. Why don't you go and ask Cat? <coughs> cat, Cat, I was hoping to have carrot soup tonight, but my carrots have disappeared. Have you seen them? Carrots, asked Cat. Why would I be interested in your carrots? Perhaps Duck knows something about carrots, but I don't. Rabbit asked Duck. Rabbit, Rabbit, I have not seen your carrots. Don't even ask me. I prefer fish to carrots. Pig will eat anything, though. Maybe you should ask Pig. But Pig was nowhere to be found. No carrot soup tonight, thought Rabbit very sadly. He really wanted carrot soup. I know what they do. He was discouraged and disappointed. Rabbit went home. He was so sad. And what do you think happened when he got home? What did they do, all his friends? They were making soup. All of his friends took the carrots, made the carrot soup, and now they're having what? A big, big party. And they, you know what they said to Rabbit? Surprise! So it's a surprise party of carrot soup. That's the end. What do you think? Thumbs up? I like that one. I would like a surprise party of carrot soup. Maybe sometime when you come to story time, I'll surprise you with carrot soup. No, ice cream! Ice cream? Oh. No, all right. Okay, that's story number two. two. Story number three. Three is next after two? Yeah. Okay. Flora's surprise. I have a feeling Flora's going to be in the garden again. Do you? Okay. Ready? Flora's family loved their garden. Does anybody here have a garden? Oh, nice. Well, then you might want to start growing some stuff. Well, Flora's family loved their garden. And Nora planted a huge, huge amaryllis, which is a big red flower. And Cora planted 20 pink tulips. That's a lot of tulips. Be careful, Flora, said her sisters. Be very careful. Look at all the bulbs she planted. You see them? Sam planted lettuce, Tom planted sunflowers, and Max sprinkled alfalfa seeds on a wet towel. Don't touch, Flora, said her brothers. Don't touch. Why don't you grow something, said Flora's dad. Some pretty flowers, maybe, said Flora's mom. Flora planted a small brick. I'm growing a house, said Flora. You think it's going to work? No. A brick? Your brick won't, won't grow as quickly as my alfalfa sprout, said Max. Or as well as my lettuce, said Sam. Or as tall as my sunflowers, said Tom. It's not a brick. It's a house, said Flora. Up sprang Cora's tulips. And Nora's amaryllis grew and grew and grew and grew. Hey, how 
How's your brick, Flora? asked Nora and Cora. It's not a brick. It's a house, muttered Flora. Every night for a week, they ate Sam's lettuce with a garnish of Max's sprouts. How's your brick, Flora? asked Tom. It's not a brick. It's a house, sniffed Flora. Nora's amaryllis burst open and Cora's tulips were beautiful. Flora poked at her house, hopefully. See it in the, in the um, pot? Do you see that brick? What do you think? She's poking and poking. Flora put her house outside beside Tom's spectacular sunflowers, but still nothing happened. I think your brick is dead, said Sam. It's not a brick, it's a house, said Flora. It's a brick. Winter came and snow fell. Nothing grew. Inside or out, nothing grew. Then, one day, spring came back and Flora's family emerged from their burrow. Look, yelled Flora, my house! For Flora's brick had grown into a perfect house. A perfect house for who? Right. And that's the end. So it actually did grow into a house, huh? Well, kind of it did. It was a duck house, a bird house. All right. Did we like that story? Yeah. I liked it too. All right. Story number. This is called four. It is story number four. Called Smash, Mash, Crash. There goes the trash. You think there could be an interesting story about um, trash? No. I think so. Don't you like to watch the trash trucks when they come down the street? Yeah. Right, so that's interesting. So now we're going to read about trash. All right. Look at the trash trucks. Sure. There's two. They do look like. Well, they're going to have to wake up because it's trash time. Yeah. All right. Smash, mash, crash. There goes the trash. Hey, hey, they're a block away. Rumbling, roaring, dragons snoring, bumping, thumping, giants jumping, booming, banging, cymbals clanging. <coughs> No, the garbage trucks are here today. Smashing, mashing, lights are flashing. Goblin garbage, gulpity gulp. Ooh. Lifting, loading, squishing, squashing, squeezing trash bags to a pulp. Do you ever see them squash all those bags? Run to the window, feel the rumble, listen, hear it groan and grumble. Down the street, hey look it's there, truck just chomped a broken chair. Look at it, it goes right in there. Rotten eggs, apple cores, pack them in, the engine roars. Stinky diapers, yeah. coffee grounds, yeah. load it up and smash it down. Oh. Yuck is right. Look. <laughs> Work is working all day long. Massive muscles, oh so strong. Greasy gloves and sticky boots. Stains are plenty on their suits. See how dirty they are? Gooey, gloppy, slimy, sloppy. Trucks are rolling 
it's a bug buffet. Flies a buzzing by the dozen, lapping up that cheese souffle. The flies are having a good dinner, huh? Black smoke belches, motor drones, crunching last night's turkey bones. <laughs> Melon rinds, moldy bread, toss them in and forge ahead. He says that yummy trash. Crushing, cramming, screeching, slamming, garbage trucks roar away. Wave goodbye, now we'll try. Smash, mash, crash. Come on, let's play. Now you can play garbage. Trash truck. Wanna play trash trucks? Nah, not my favorite either. Was that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? That's a very stinky story, isn't it? A fun, stinky story. All right. I don't have anything else about the environment or dirt or digging or planting. But I do, I do have a fun story called The Day the Crayons Quit. Okay. See all those crayons? I know everybody here has plenty of crayons, right? All right. This is our last story, so I wanted to make it kind of a fun one. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, the day the crayons quit. One day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons, and he found a stack of letters with his name on them. See, it says to Duncan. Hey, Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make my work harder than any of your other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out coloring fire engines and apples and strawberries and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas time and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. Red Crayon does do a lot of work. Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favorite crayon for grapes, dragons, and wizard's hat, wizard's hats. But it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous color goes outside the lines. If you don't start coloring inside the lines soon, I am gonna completely lose it. Your very, very neat friend, Purple Crayon. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called Light Brown or Dark Tan because I am neither. I am beige and I am proud. I'm also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crayon. It's not fair that Brown gets all the bears all the ponies and puppies, while the only things that I get are turkey dinners, if I'm lucky. And I get wheat, and let's be honest, when was the last time you saw a kid excited about coloring wheat? Your beige friend, beige crayon. He doesn't look happy. He's sad. Yep. Duncan, gray crayon here. You're killing me! You're killing me! I know you love elephants, and I know elephants are gray, but that's a lot of space to color in all by myself. And don't you ever get me started on rhinos, hippos, and humpback whales. You know how tired I am after handling all those big things? Such big animals? Baby penguins are gray, you know. So are tiny rocks and pebbles. How about one of those once in a while just to give me a break? Your very, very tired friend, Gray Crayon. Gray does do a lot of work. Dear Duncan, you color with me, but why? 
Most of the time, I'm the same color as the pages you're using on me. White. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to color snow or to fill an empty space between other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, white crayon. And it's true, you can hardly see white crayon, huh? I didn't see him. Yeah, it's a white cat in the snow. Duncan made it, but you can hardly see white, right? I can see the bottom of All right. Hi, Duncan. I hate being used to draw the outline of things. Things that are colored in by other colors, all of which think that they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill in the colors of the ball with all the other colors. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, black crayon. What do you think of the black beach ball? I want the black rainbow. Oh, the black rainbow. Dear Duncan, as green crayon, I am writing for two reasons. One is to say, I like my work. Loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs, and frogs. I have no problems and wish to congratulate you on a very successful coloring things green career so far. The second reason I write is for my friends, yellow, green, and orange crayon. Both crayons feel they should be the color of the sun. Please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. Your happy friend, green crayon. Dear Duncan, yellow crayon here. I need you to tell orange crayon that I, I am the color of the sun. I would tell him, but we are no longer speaking and I have to prove I'm the color of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to color in the sun on your Happy Farm coloring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page seven. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on a field of yellow corn. Your pal and the true color of the sun, what? Yellow crayon. There's the sun. What color did he make it? Yellow. He did. Dear Duncan, I see yellow crayon already talk to you, the big whiner. Anyway, could you please tell, me, tell Mr. Tattletail that he is not the color of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know I am clearly the color of the sun because on Thursday you used me to color in the sun on both the Monkey Island and Meet the Zookeeper pages in your Day at the Zoo coloring book. Orange, you glad I'm here? Ha ha ha! Your pal and the real color of the sun, Orange Crayon. See, he did color the sun orange that day. Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favorite color this past year, and the year before that, and the year before that. I have really enjoyed all those oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds, and clear skies. But the bad news is, I am so short and stubby now, I can't even see over the railing and the crayon box anymore. I need a break. Your very stubby friend, Blue Crayon. And look at how little Blue Crayon is. So he is very stubby. He uses him a lot. Duncan. Okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once, not once in this whole past year. It's because you think I'm a girl's color, isn't it? Speaking of which, please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to color in the Little Princess coloring book. I think she did a fabulous job of staying inside the lines. Now back to us. 
Could you please use me sometime to call the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or even a cowboy? Goodness knows they could use a splash of color. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. Hey, Duncan, it's me, Peach Crayon. Look at Peach Crayon. Why did you peel off my paper wrapping? Now I'm naked and too embarrassed to leave my crayon box. So he's staying in the crayon box. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? Would you like that? I need some clothes. Help. Your friend, Naked Peach Crayon. <laughs> well, poor Duncan just wanted to color, and of course he wanted his crayons to be happy, and that gave him an idea. When Duncan showed his teachers his new picture, she gave him an A for coloring, and an A plus for creativity. Do you know why? Why do you think she gave him a high mark, an A for coloring? He used every single crayon, didn't he? He used the rainbow crayon. He used everything. There's blue and black and gray and white. Look, even white, a white kitty that you can see. And look, the big dinosaur, pink. There's a Santa Claus, kind of pink and orange. So he did everything this different, didn't he? The red, the rainbow crayon. Yep. The black. And the purple one. And right in the black and rainbow. The and the whale. Do you like his picture? Can we yeah. see the rainbow Okay. Rainbow. The rainbow one? Yeah. The black rainbow? The end. No. The, the very end. No. The other Oh, the rainbow crayon. So there's a color for everybody to use. Okay. Shall we sing one song before we finish up? Yeah. What can we sing? Open shut them. Open shut them? Yeah, open shut them. Open shut them. All right, we'll sing open shut them. Ready? Ready for open shut them? Open shut them. Them open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them. Creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open up your little mouth, but do not let them in, in, in. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Good job today, you guys. I'm glad you all came. Bye, everybody. Say bye. Say bye to everybody at home. Look.